Hey folks, how's everybody doing this week? Aki, looks like you have a uh, new beastie going there. Hey folks, how's everybody doing this week? So is the uh, uh, is the Avastar in its uh, final release now? Not uh, not beta. Okay, that's good. All right. Well, let's see. We might as well get started. Um, not a lot new this week uh, on our end. We've got the um, Reset HTTP viewer is still in RC. There's a few other RCs uh, that are also out there doing their thing, and so we're keeping an eye on on all of them. Um, and uh, I guess other than that, uh, it's basically open Q and A. I've been working on the animated object stuff. Uh, uh, most of the time for the last week, uh, nothing really to show off yet, but uh, basically doing some prototyping stuff, you know, doing kind of proof of concept to see whether uh, whether we can get things to animate uh, without an avatar and that sort of thing. Um, so it's uh, you know it's looking encouraging so far, but uh, again, it's it's very early stages, so you know I can't say for sure what the final architecture is going to look like or anything like that. Just starting to look at the um, simulator side pieces now. Anything to test with? Uh, yeah, you know, basically the, the test things I'm using are, you know, single single objects that have uh, that have rigged meshes. Um, you know, for example, there's a uh, there's a bear that was released as uh, part of the, the, one of the SL birthday celebrations a few years ago, that uh, that works well for those kinds of tests. Uh, but uh, yeah, if if there's things out there that uh, people uh, people have, especially if there's also you know one or more corresponding animations for them, um, I'd, I'd be happy to take a look at them. Uh, Paul, so you asked uh, how it all fits together. Um, you know, the testing I've been doing so far, what I have is a, um, I have a, a, what's called a dummy avatar. We we already kind of have a notion of, of avatars that aren't associated with with people in the viewer. Um, so we have a uh, kind of a modified version of one of those. It, it's, currently, you can see those if you're doing like a mesh upload or an animation upload. Um, you see this, uh, you know, kind of moving figure that's not, uh, it's not you and it's not anybody who's logged in, but it's just this kind of standalone thing that's powered by the viewer. So, um, you know, you can start out with that, uh, don't actually render it graphically, um, tweak around with the, um, tweak around with the transforms to get it in the right orientation relative to whatever object it's trying to animate, um, and then get the object to, to use it as a source of, of joint motion, so uh, that's the kind of thing I've been doing in, in recent tests. That's that's not to say that it's definitely going to work that way in the final product, but just that um, you know that does uh, that does seem to work as far as it goes, and it is possible to to drive things using that kind of framework. So uh, that's that's the kind of stuff I've been looking at recently. Uh, scripted commands, uh, you know, we don't really have anything on the simulator side yet. I've just started looking at that. Um, uh, you know, what we've talked about is that there would be at least a couple of new LSL commands, um, you know, for for starting and stopping an animation associated with an object, um, and that those commands then could be um, invoked by a script within the same object. Um, 
combinations that are in that object's inventories. Um, so that's that's the kind of thing we'll be uh, uh, testing out once we have some some uh, more stuff on the simulator and, and see how that all behaves. Uh, we had one question about loading uh, Beck Janus. Do you mean loading in the sense of kind of what the performance impact is, or or like how do you load these things, or or what? Yeah, I really can't say yet. Um, you know, I, I expect the performance impact to be similar to what we see with, uh, you know, avatars wearing rigged mesh objects today, uh, where, you know, just the cost of having a skeleton is fairly low as if it's not doing anything. Um, you know, for example, when we added a, a lot more bones in Bento, we didn't really see a big impact just from the fact that the bones were there. but uh, then, of course, if you've got a rigged mesh that uh, is actually being animated with respect to a lot of bones, then the bones have to be driven and the rendering has to has to keep up with them and so forth. And, you know, that's that's where you see most of your uh, performance impact. So, you know, the prediction would be that it's going to be uh, it's going to be fairly similar. But uh, again, we don't really have any uh, any, you know, it's not far enough along to really get any numbers on it. I'm sure, uh, you know, once things are farther along and we have a, a project viewer, certainly we'll, uh, we'll let people know and uh, ask, for, ask for feedback. Be happy to get some, uh, you know, get more, uh, more eyeballs on it. Now, are you expecting uh, this to, the way this to work is we'll need a new upload, or are you expecting us to be able to, like, res a mesh from a year ago, and now it's uh, an animated object? Uh, yeah, you know, that's, that's the way I've been thinking about it, is that it's basically being, being animatable is an additional property, you know, that you can... You could take an existing mesh, uh, you know, if it's something you have edit permissions for, and you can, you know, you can set that property on it. Um, you know, if it's set to be animatable, then, uh, you know, it won't work as an attachment anymore, but it will be, uh, uh, but it will be able to be driven by its own animations. Um, and uh, so, you know, I don't know exactly what that means. Is it a new print type? Is it a uh, is this animatability just like an additional field that we're adding to uh, to an existing object? Um, you know, don't don't know for sure yet, but that's uh, that's what we've kind of been thinking about so far. And this would be a no different upload than what we're doing now. Same uh, yeah, that would be the idea that you know you you upload a mesh and uh, you know that gives you an object that has has associated mesh information and then you know out of the box you can use it as an attachment um, if you want to use it as a separate standalone animation then you would need to go through an additional uh, edit step to set that uh, to set that field I actually came today with a whole slew of questions and comments related to this and relating to what you're saying just now um, you, you commented that if it's something that's resible that's going to animate and it won't be able to attach. I wanted to actually add my commentary that I think one of the most useful uses for this will be for pets and breedables and that sort of thing. And in a lot of those instances, you, you want it to be able to animate on the ground as well as when it's on the avatar. Like you want to be able to res your horse and have it graze, but you also want to be able to wear it and ride it, or maybe it'll like a temp, temp attached to you and you can ride it, or if you have like a dog breedable, it'll be on the ground following you around, but then you can pick it up and cuddle it, that sort of thing. So I wanted to actually suggest that it should work as both as either a worn animated attachment or as a res thing on the ground, and that maybe we should be aiming towards like, for, for things using this that's expected to be worn animated mm. and rest animated that yeah. we should be aiming towards 
uh, rigging them and animating them as like bento pets, basically things that are using all of these new bones that we've just added that can animate on their own. It'll just be as though there's an invisible human there when it's on the ground <laughs> versus when you pick it up, then it will animate as an actual pet that's interacting with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's an interesting point. And we, we certainly don't have any definite, uh, uh, you know, decision on that. My my biggest concern with trying to have, um, you know, animated independently animated attachments is just that it it uh, I think it opens up the possibilities for uh, uh, you know having having bad performance impact even more. Um, you know, especially since animated objects don't uh, don't get assessed for land impact the same way. We don't have that hook to to control. Um, uh, you know, to control the the loading. Um, you know, we we have the rendering cost, and we could factor it into the rendering cost. But uh, um, you know, it's it, it, I, if we have a decent answer for how to handle the, uh, the performance aspect, then uh, yeah, it's it's conceivable we'd want to look at that. It it does seem like there'd be some cool applications there. Yeah, I think that's all just going to depend on how you handle it, because obviously you don't want to give a single avatar two skeletons, but if when it's attached, it acts as though it's just part of your existing avatar skeleton, I think that there's a lot of cool things you can do with that. And in terms of having an independently animated part on your avatar, I don't think that that in itself is something to shy away from, because we already have that in terms of like, wings that come with their own animations or tails that come with their own animations or entire rideable dragons that come with their mm. own animations. Yeah. That, that's something well, I mean, they do come with doing. their own animations, but they're still using your skeleton, right? So it, it, there is a Correct. difference if there's actually an additional so, copy of the skeleton for these uh, Right. Uh, for so, these so that's what I'm saying objects. is if we could aim it in such a direction, since you already commented last week that these things are going to be using the existing avatar skeleton that we already have set up, if we could hope to aim it in a direction where when it's animate or when it's on the ground, not attached to an avatar, then it contains its own skeleton and is animating independently. But if when worn, then it just becomes part of your avatar skeleton. I feel like that would add a lot of use. Hmm. Okay. I mean, that's you could do it that way, or you could. Or you could think about it. It actually continues to have its own skeleton. I, I guess. Um, I guess if it's not going to have its own skeleton all the time, then you get into the question of, uh, you know, how do you make sure you're not conflicting with the bones that the avatar is trying to use for something else, right? I mean, you'd have something that would sort of work correctly when it's wandering around independently, but then you attach it to yourself, and uh, suddenly there's this fight over who gets to you know, who gets to drive the wing bones or whatever it is. Um, so that that part might be trickier, although, you know, from a, from a performance standpoint, it might, uh, it might be a bit lower. Well, that just, uh, that, that's what I commented earlier, is if we were rigging these things as, like, bento pets that aren't using the main avatar bones but are using bonus bones, like yeah. all of these pets that we're seeing already, then that could be a really nice application for this feature. Now, yeah, would there? Um, let me go off, uh, sorry, go ahead, Medu. Uh, would there be any way to like limit? Like maybe we can just attach one uh, uh, animated object to us. Yeah, I mean, if if it's something we're trying to pursue, there there are various kinds of uh, you know limits we could impose, and you know, in terms of like how many of them or how complex the the uh, the rigging can be, or uh, you know how much it affects your your computed avatar rendering cost, or or various things. But I mean, it's at this point, it's it's really uh, you know it's a little early to say exactly how that would work out. Um, let me let me go off in a little bit of a side trail here. We were talking about rideables. Um, you know, how does that work now with vehicles? Are if you're riding in a in a vehicle, is is it attached to you? Or are you attached to it by sitting on it? Um, you know, are there different it approaches to that? It actually works 
both ways, especially with, with bento or with other animated mesh writables that you sit on and you can have someone else sit with you, you're actually wearing it as part of your avatar. So it's something that is rigged to you, but then you would have to res a vehicle on the ground that you sit on and someone else sits on. So then they're like riding with you. Uh -huh. is basically how that's done right now. But it would actually be really, really cool if these things could be on the ground and animating on their own, and you can just sit on them and use them as a vehicle. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think that's another scenario that we'd want to to look at. Um, you know, if if there's a way to get that to work, you know, you could be riding a you know an octopus or whatever, and it's uh, it's doing its thing and and uh, moving its bones independently. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think we'll, we'll probably want to look at both kind of scenarios. Uh, let's see, we're getting backed up a little bit in the text chat. Let me uh, take a look here for a second. Okay, I guess I don't see any uh, other questions we're missing. If I did miss something, speak up. Um, yeah, so, you know, for the testing I've done so far, I haven't looked at uh, attachments at all. These are just you know, standalone objects that are off doing their own thing, but uh, uh, I'm sure there will be some additional complications to, to handle those kinds of things. There's also quite a bit of logic in the code now for positioning the avatar, you know, there's all this stuff for calculating offsets for this and that and relative to the ground and hover and all that, and um, I think that stuff may interact in interesting ways with, uh, um, you know, non, uh, you know, non-avatar rigged objects. Um, so we'll, I'm sure we'll find out more about the byways of that as we get farther into the project. Attachment points also animate with animated objects. Um, okay, so the way it works uh, is that the you know the the attachment points are also joints, so they're part of the skeleton. Um, so if you had a, a mesh that was rigged to the um, that was rigged to to uh, attachment points, and you were then animating those attachment points. Uh, that should work. Um, however, the the attachment points wouldn't actually support having things attached to them, right? Your your uh, your animated object is just a single object that doesn't uh, that doesn't sort of have uh, uh, you know kind of uh, connections to other things the way that an avatar has attachments. Polysail has a question about link sets. What's the question about link sets? Yeah, uh, yeah, this is something that I should be doing more experimenting with um, at some point, but, uh, you know, I, I think the idea would be that if you have something that's, uh, 
you know, basically it's a single it's a single object in your inventory, um, but it could be a link set that contains multiple rigged meshes and some static meshes. Um, you know, those those pieces should all be able to kind of uh, uh, you know play nicely together with the uh, uh, you know, with the the single skeleton that then would be associated with that object. Um, I, I'm not positive how it would work with the static meshes because, uh, you know, I'm not sure how the positioning would work with that. Right? You've got uh, you've got your rigged things that are moving based on the position of your joints, and then you've got your, uh, you know, if you've got non-rigged things in there too, then um, uh, you know, how do you control the the relative positioning? Um, not sure how that would fly. I haven't uh, haven't tested anything like that yet. But uh, yeah, the idea would be that uh, you know each each uh, sort of uh, animated object would be uh, you know would have kind of one skeleton, and if it had multiple uh, mesh pieces, they would all be referencing that same skeleton. Yep. Hello, live streaming people. Uh, so things are looking pretty promising with this if you're already um, getting some tests in. Uh, yeah, I'd say it's promising so far. Um, you know, the the fact that we can get things to work in a you know in a certain kind of uh, modified viewer, uh, you know, in a in a kind of a limited test domain. It, you know, obviously we're still we're still a long way from shipping product, but it's uh, it's certainly encouraging. We haven't run into any fundamental obstacles yet. Um, it, it's a little bit like, you know, some of you may have been around in the early days of Bento. It's a little like when we were first trying to, uh, you know, add any kind of bones at all to the skeleton just to see if it would work. And, uh, uh, you know, there was a period where we had a bunch of uh, kind of random tentacles on the avatar that we were waving around. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll be uh, trying to turn it into something more real in the uh, in the coming weeks, but uh, that's that's kind of where we are right now. Uh, so you had a question about the uh, body shape. Um, yeah, that that gets into a pretty uh, that gets into a pretty large project in the sense that, um, you know, we would need to have some notion of, you know, what's the outfit associated with the object. Um, we, you know, the baking service would need to be able to process all of those objects to tell you what your params were. Um, you know, you'd, you'd need uh, some way to, to control the sliders, even if maybe it was just editing them on your own avatar and then passing them off or whatever. Um, 
So uh, you know that's not part of this uh, the current project. The the idea here is to do kind of the the simplest useful thing and uh, you know get it out as soon as we can and start letting people play around with it and and uh, uh, you know see what works and and what the limitations are. Um, I think it's it's a lot easier to iterate if uh, uh, if you don't try to get too deep into uh, kind of a giant project that uh, uh, you know takes a long time. Yeah, you know, uh, and uh, yes, to PolySales' point, you you can uh, animate the objects, um, you know, using animations, which uh, lets you approximate uh, a lot of the kinds of things that you can do with the um, uh, uh, you know with the the slider system. With regards to that, I understand that Linden Lab isn't very keen on allowing us to do scale in animation for avatars, but I would actually really like to request that you enable scale animation for these specifically, because since, again, I feel like a lot of the, the main uses for this new tool would be as rideable pets and breedable, or breedable pets rather, and rideables and animals and NPC characters, that sort of thing, allowing us to be able to do animations that include scale by each bone will allow us to create a huge variety in like a baby pet growing up to an adult or in NPC bodies that look different. They don't all look like exactly the same person. Maybe some have different facial shapes or one shorter or taller or fatter. Um, that would add a lot of variety, I think. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm sure you could do a lot with that. Um, I mean, one thing to keep in mind is that if you have the ability to uh, to do scale uh, in animations, um, you know that it it makes it uh, it makes it easier for the animations to get into a fight with the slider system, right? We we've had this problem with with uh, uh, you know the translational changes already. Um, uh, the the rotations are still pretty well behaved because there's no conflict, right? You can only you can only animate rotations with with animations. Um, but uh, you know I I don't think we'd be likely to pursue something where uh, there's sort of different categories of animations, and some can be applied in some contexts and not others. Um, that that seems like kind of a can of worms. Um, so you know, it, I think if we did do the scale thing, it would probably be uh, its own project, and it would probably, you know, it, and if we did it, it would probably work for everything. Um, one thing that uh, I, I wondered about a little bit would be if there's a you know, a, a more restricted way to get some of the ability to do scaling, like, um, you know, maybe we just add a root node scale based on the scale of the uh, of the object that's being animated, or something like that. So, you know, you could make a, a big bear and a small bear, and they would each kind of scale their skeleton accordingly. Um, you know, that that might be a uh, you know, it's it's not as it's not as complex a system. It wouldn't really give the effect of sliders, but it would give you some of the uh, uh, some of the basic ability to to differentiate your object. I haven't done any tests with that, um, so uh, you know, don't know anything about feasibility. But uh, it, you know, it seems like a, something that would be uh, would be kind of cool if we get it to work.
scale of the impelvis. Yeah, that would, would be uh, interesting to take a look at that. Um, you know, the way the way it works now, the scale of the um, the scale of the the mesh object is basically ignored, right? I've I've seen meshes that when you res them, they're like a hundred feet tall, and then you actually attach them to yourself, and they you know get scaled down to the size of your uh, you know, to the size of your own avatar, um, you know, basically the the avatar, the, the object's uh, scale stuff gets ignored, um, but we could, uh, uh, you know, since it's a new category of object, we don't have to worry about backwards compatibility, we could, uh, we could consider, you know, having it, having it be a bit different. Yeah, uh, Becca. Yeah, I, I share your concerns about the potential for for uh, you know bad performance impact. Um, you know, it's it's certainly not our intent to have something that uh, uh, you know it's super easy for somebody to go out and, and you know spam a hundred objects into into the region and have all our friends do the same. Um, but we just don't know enough about the the performance impact yet to say uh, exactly how we're going to try to regulate that. So. Well, you know, it's it's just a little TBD at this point. Yeah, I mean, since these are, uh, Lucia mentions having a minimum land impact. Um, that's certainly something that's worth looking at. Um, you know, unlike uh, an attachment, these are things that uh, uh, you know actually are uh, objects in world, and so they will have a, a land impact associated with them. And if they're a new type of object, or a, a you know an object that's flagged as a as a new something, then we could potentially uh, uh, you know incorporate that information to to modify the land impact, where you know it, it costs more to have a uh, uh, an animated object than just a, a static object. Uh, probably a reasonable thing to do since it's certainly going to be more expensive to to render. Are not um, pathfinding objects already pen penalized right now? Uh, sorry, ask that again. What's, what's penalized about pathfinding? Are not uh, pathfinding objects penalized with land impact right now? Yeah, I actually don't know. I've I've never worked with pathfinding and uh, haven't looked into it yet. But uh, it it may well be that that's that's, that's factored in. Don't know. A uh, question about land impact for vehicles. Uh, yeah, again, I don't know what the current uh, rule on that is, but uh, it, you know, that's the kind of thing we'd want to look at.
How many people here work with uh, pathfinding? I'd asked about it at the previous meeting, and it sounded like uh, sounded like it wasn't super popular. But uh, curious what the kind of current current consensus is. All right. Well, any other questions? I'm happy to talk about things other than the uh, animated objects as well. Um, you know, the the other piece of this project is the supplementary animations, the you know, flapping your wings while you walk and chew gum and so forth. Um, but uh, we haven't uh, haven't really done any work on that yet, so nothing much to talk about there. Uh, yeah, the land impact basically is TBD. Um, you know, we don't have any, uh, we don't have any objects to, to you know, do performance testing on yet. Um, I, you know, all the prototyping is just viewer side so far. Um, so once we have some, some, uh, you know, something more real that actually has a, a simulator behind it, um, and we can do some, some uh, better controlled tests and try to, uh, try to assess kind of what the land impact should be. Uh, okay, I'm always happy to have uh, to have more stuff to test with. Um, you know, we've got a we've got a few wing things kicking around already that uh, uh, you might do. But uh, you know, the the more stuff I have, the the, the uh, better testing we can do. So you know, sure, anything you've got would be great. ETA until a project viewer. We don't know. It's it's early yet. Yeah, you know, I, I certainly hope it's a simpler project than Bento was, but uh, exactly how long it's going to take, don't know yet. Um, let's see, we had... Yeah, uh, uh, Maxwell Graph mentions having a question on another topic. It's fine to kick that in too if you want. Okay, um, I, I've spoken to a few people that are here privately about this, and I've been speaking to a number of moles and uh, other creators about this idea that's been running around in my head. I know it's been mentioned in other ways in the past, but uh, you know, one of the things that I really miss the most 
about the way SL is now compared to how it used to be is the fact that more and more as the technologies have changed, I'm pulled outside of Second Life to do my work, being able to work on things. And I've been thinking a lot about, like, what can I do to, to how can we get us back in here more to, to be part of this instead of sitting in Maya or Blender for 90% of my workload? And one of the things that, that has come up uh, again and again is the idea of some kind of a very basic mesh editing system using the using the existing uh, setup the way it is here. Now, I, I don't mean anything like a full mesh tool set. I mean maybe even nothing more than being able to move a, an individual face, edge, or point on an object. Um, the idea whether it's possible or how much work it could take, I don't know, but I think the benefits for something like that would be nice. really, really huge. And and two specific things stick out in my mind that I wanted to mention. One is obviously being able to be in world a lot more and, and really kind of breathe some new life into SL for the next couple of years and, and bring a lot of creators back in here. But the second point would also be you know, people that are, there's a lot of prim builders in SL that don't use any kind of mesh system or don't know or don't want to use that. And it would be able to give an extended set of capabilities to those people as well. So I, I think there's some really serious benefits for being able to implement even a real basic kind of mesh editing system into, you know, the, the items that we've created here or uploaded here. Is that something that's even remotely possible with the editing system that we've got now? That, like the yeah, object properties? Uh, yeah, I mean, the short answer is it's really not possible with the system we have now. It would be, uh, it would have, you know, kind of have to be its own project. Um, but what we have now, the, the mesh import is all based on, uh, you know, you specify a Colada file and then, uh, you know, the, the mesh uploader chews through that and, and figures out how it would be represented in world and then kind of uploads in, in one big batch that you get charged for. Um, so, you know, the idea of being able to make sort of small tweaks to one of those models would be, um, you know, would be a fairly big change from the way we have things structured right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I agree. It's, it's a real, uh, it's a real concern. I think that uh, one of the one of the neat things about uh, about SL is the kind of approachability. Of, you know, not not that everything is is necessarily super intuitive, but you know that you can come in and uh, uh, you know start plop, plopping down prims and and uh, shaping them and doing stuff in world and see the results right away, and other people can see it too. And you know that's that's a cool thing. It's a you know it's a collaborative environment. It helps people. Uh, you know, helps people kind of plan what they want to do. Um, and if you have to go off into Blender or Maya or something to make your object and upload it, um, you know, that's, it's a lot more barrier to entry. It's harder to learn the tools and it's, uh, uh, and it also really kind of doesn't have the, the engagement factor that you have doing stuff in the world. So, right. um, you I mean, know, I'm, I understand that. Like 5% the of my time is here now. You yeah. know, it's like I miss yeah. it so bad. You know, obviously the, the problem is that uh, you know these modeling tools like Blender or Maya are, are huge, and so you know to to actually be able to do everything you could in one of those tools uh, in the world would, I think, be uh, you know an intractably large project. Um, so the question is, you know, what's what's kind of the smallest subset of that stuff that would be uh, that would still be useful, that would still be kind of worth people's time to to be able to use and. Uh, you know, if if there was such a thing, then you know we could try to define kind of a project. It's we still got the the basic problem that we have limited resources and a lot of projects. Um, but right. uh, you know, before we could even kind of contemplate it, we'd have to figure out you know what's the whether there's some reasonable subset that uh, that would still be useful. I mean, it certainly seems like there would be a demand for it if the if the subject is, is brought up everywhere that I've talked to people about it, it's been a pretty 
you know, unified, overwhelming response has been positive about this. Oh, idea. yeah. Even, and, and again, I'm not talking about, you know, maybe even adding or removing vertices or something is, is not possible, but simply editing and being able to move them from one position to another position to, to just tweak stuff would be a huge advantage. In uh, Daz Studio, they have an internal morphing system. And the way they do it is they allow you to add a morphing ball, something like a morphing ball to a point in the mesh, and then you morph that ball and it affects parts of the mesh. So that's kind of how they do it. I mean, I'm, I'm also thinking for people that are, you know, basic prim, prim builders that, that are able to, you know, res a cube, just the ability to, to click on a corner of that cube and reposition that vertice would, would be a, a huge advantage to people that build in world. You know, it's a pretty extensive benefit for, for something that, you know, I mean, I don't know how much would be involved in, in adding this kind of functionality, but it seems like for a, a, a minimum amount of changes, you could get a, a maximum amount of benefits to both the, the community here and, you know, that would return back eventually into adding a lot more life to Second Life in general. Well, okay, so let's say you return. could do vertices, um, you know, individually. Uh, I guess I'd be curious, how, how far does that get you? I mean, that doesn't give you the ability to define... Uh, or modify your texture on the fly. Um, you know, it doesn't give you the ability to edit animations, um, and it doesn't let you change the topology, right? If you if you actually want to have the, the the connectivity of the vertices change, then that would be some sort of additional capabilities you would need as well. Um, so it's a uh, I don't know. It it it, it has a feeling like kind of like it's pulling on you know a loose, loose uh, you know strand of a sweater <laughs> or something where like you wind up like pulling all of Blender in if you're not careful. Um, but uh, you know it's I think it's a it's a discussion that's worth having. That it's um, you know if there was a a feasible subset, then at least it would be something that we could uh, you know get kind of have on the radar as a as a possible thing to think about. Um, you know, another basic thing that people are going to want, I think, would be skin weights, right? If you're, um, I think people mostly, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think people are mostly editing meshes to have rigged objects that go on avatars rather than editing meshes to create, uh, you know, static scenery in the world. Um, so it seems like you would probably need that as well, wouldn't you? I, you know, uh, again, it seems like anything that's going to touch the avatar is, is opening up a whole other can of worms that would seem like one more barrier to being able to implement something like this. So I wasn't really even considering that. I, I'm thinking more just, uh, you know, static objects or, or whatever that are in world as opposed to attachments. It's just an idea. Um, I wanted to, to throw it out there and see what's what's even feasible. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it seems like the uh, it seems like there are two basic obstacles, which is you know, you know, one we would have to we would have to open up the kind of representation of the mesh so that it's possible to do small edits rather than treating it as kind of this this monolithic thing, right? It's it's uploaded as a monolithic thing now and if you had to, you know, re-upload every time you moved a vertex or something, that, that wouldn't really work. Um, and and the other barrier is just the 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 scope question, right? It's like, you know, how is there a kind of set of a small set of features that would still be useful to enough people that it would be, uh, uh, you know, appealing to them? Um, and uh, so, the, you know, those are the pieces that uh, I'm not I'm not positive about at this point. I mean, I guess I'm looking at it from a very simplistic 
perspective of you know when I click on an object and go into edit mode I can see all the polygons in it whether it's a, a prim or a sculpty or a mesh and you know if I can see all of the polygons for that how far away would it be to being able to select one individual edge or face or point and scooch that over a little bit yeah yeah that, that depends a lot on the particular object right like when you're looking at a prim um, you know you're looking at something that's kind of really represented as a, a little piece of math um, and then you know that that piece of math is used to generate the, um, the polygons uh, you know the, the actual vertices so you know in a sense the the vertices you see that when it's displayed aren't aren't really there they're not first class uh, Entities that you could uh, you could kind of move them independently. Um, of course, with a with a mesh object, you know the vertices really are there, and in, in principle you okay. could edit them independently. Um, but it would be uh, uh, but it, you know it'd be quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of new work to allow that. It's not really possible now. So so prim um, and mesh objects are pretty much the same, but sculpty is the the odd man out because of the well, way the math system is representing know, prims, it. Right? Prims are really kind of their own thing because. Um, you know, what, there I'm talking about like you can make a cube or a torus or whatever. Um, you know, and, and when you're doing editing on those things, um, somebody asked about moving the math. I mean, that's basically what you're doing. If you, you know, if you create a torus and you make it, you make it bigger or smaller or, or scale it in a certain direction or whatever, you're you're basically changing these uh, these kind of pieces of, of how it's represented. Uh, you know, mathematically, you're not you're not really moving vertices directly. You're you're kind of Changing this underlying uh, representation that's that's used to derive the vertices. Um, you know, sculpties. Uh, you know, I, I I don't think we'd be likely to try to, you know, encourage sculpties. They're they've got a lot of uh, they've got a lot of bad properties in terms of you know a they're pretty limited what you can do with them and b they're very uh, performance inefficient. Um, you know, one of the motivations for for having the mesh project in the first place was to have something that would be a, uh, uh, you know, a good substitute for sculpties, um, so that hopefully people wouldn't need to use them as much. Um, but but what a, a sculpty actually is is, um, you know, it's it's a it's a grid. You've got a, it's it's basically like a, a 2D representation, sure. and then you sort of do displacements of the of the you know of the vertices in that grid. Um, so you know, there's there's limitations to what you can represent with that. Um, it wouldn't be particularly convenient to make a, a, you know something with complex topology or whatever. You couldn't make something that has a you know a whole bunch through it or that has a lot of uh, uh, you know branches to it or whatever. Um, or for some for some categories of things, you can make a decent looking sculpty, but uh, it's it's probably not really uh, you know. It doesn't have a lot of the, the capabilities that you'd really like for uh, for uh, you know, general purpose modeling. Uh, well, cool. should I go ahead and file a Jira about this whole idea? Do you think? Or yeah, it's it's uh, if you want to file a Jira, that would be great. It's you know it's nice to have the it's nice to have these things kind of commented on and uh, uh, you know captured in one place. So then when we're talking about them, we we have something to reference. Um, but uh, you, you know, as I say, I, I don't think that we're at the point now where it's it's something that's you know well enough defined and has a limited enough scope that uh, you know we'd be likely to be tackling it uh, you know right now. But it's uh, you know it's still helpful to have that kind of thing as uh, as kind of something you can point to and talk about. All right. Well, I will file one. I, I just want to be careful doing that because I don't want to make any enemies. The last Jira that I started was the Mesh Deformer project, so I don't want to open up a can of worms. <laughs> Every, everything has cans of worms. <laughs> um, yeah, you might want to mention that this, this was discussed at the um, content creators uh, user group, um, so then whoever's triaging it will probably drop me a line about it, or, or you can just send me the link when you, uh, when you file it. Okay. All right, cool. Thanks very much. I appreciate your time. I'm going to scooch. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye, everyone. All right, yeah, thanks.
I will do so. Uh, let's see, I had a question about uh, if sculpties are inefficient, will animated mesh be more efficient? Um, well, that's uh, that's certainly the hope. It's it's also going to be a lot more capable. Um, you know, animated mesh uh, is basically going to have the same capabilities as what you can do with, with meshes on avatars today. So, um, you know, that gives you the kind of full skinned object capabilities, which, of course, you don't have with sculpties. I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison, but for you know sculpt users versus animated meshes, but of course it, uh, I'm sure it depends a lot on the details. You know, a mesh can be very complex or very simple, um, and uh, it, it matters a lot how much detail Most you have. Of the overhead from animating objects would come from the matrix math, pretty much. Probably going to depend on your GPU on it. Uh, we calculate all the matrix math on the CPU first. It's actually more inefficient to do it on the GPU. Yeah, but I mean, if you've got a, a crummy graphics card, then uh, you may wind up being that the, you know, the, the crummy graphics are the dominating cost rather than the matrix math that feeds into it. Could be. But, uh, yeah, certainly we, we saw matrix math being a, a Big, uh, big limiting factor during bento development. Uh, you guys are like just squeaking under the limit on a lot of GPUs, like just barely. I think it's by like thirty vertex uniform slots, if I remember right. When I last yeah. did the math. I I don't remember what the numbers are, but we we did actually do a bunch of testing with that, um, you know, to take the uh, take the viewers and and uh, actually run them on a bunch of systems with with different uh, GPUs and see if there's a point where they would sort of fall over. We we tweaked the um, basically the number of matrices, you know, the the uh, uh, the, the limit to how many joints can be animated in a given mesh. Um, we, we did tweak that a couple of times during the project to, uh, uh, as you say, squeak under the bar. Yeah, and I contributed something that uh, removed a waste of four vertex uniform slots. Yep, yep. That per also joint, per whatever. In theory, though, animated objects wouldn't actually be that expensive as long as there weren't too many of them in the scene. That's where the trouble will start happening. Yep. Yeah, uh, so we've, we've had some comments in text chat here about, um, you know, areas where the land impact calculations are not that great and, uh, uh, or where the, the, you know, rendering cost should be updated. Um, that That's still a, a live project, um, but, uh, uh, it, it, you know, it, it will probably need to be looked at more before, uh, before anything can go live with, um, you know, with this uh, with this animated object thing, but uh, uh, you know, we we just don't know exactly how that's all going to shake out at this point. Yeah. 
Uh, questions about cost relative to number of bones. Um, you know, I think the the main cost is how many bones you're actually using in the process of animating a, a mesh. Um, you know, just the fact that the bones exist in the skeleton doesn't really impose a lot of overhead. But uh, you know, once once they're active, once they're actually being animated and used to drive the mesh, then uh, uh, you know, as uh, as noted, you wind up with um, uh, you know, a lot of matrix math and, and other overhead. All right, well, I guess we're about at time here. Um, uh, good discussion today. Thanks for all the uh, questions and comments. And uh, we will we'll keep you posted. Oh, I think there was a question back there uh, a while back about uh, the big texture stuff. Um, short answer is we uh, don't have anything new on the, on the uh, big texture stuff right now. We'll keep you posted. All right, we'll see everybody or everybody who wants to be seen um, next week, and then we'll have a, a week off the week after that. Bye, all. Awesome. Thanks.